Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is AJ with Relentless Racing. Today I'm gonna to be talking a little bit about a tool that I built because I am tired of going to the head shop to check if my valves are seating properly and if they're sealed. So check out this new tool that I built. I'm hoping that this may help you guys. And if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Thanks. Before I pick up my head from the cylinder shop, I'll always have them check the ports and typically what they'll do is they'll put a suction plate onto each one of these ports and they will apply a vacuum to the port and what happens is when they apply a vacuum to all these ports I want to see a particular amount of vacuum and that proves to me that the valve seat is sealed. So they'll do this on the intake side and they'll also do it on each one of the exhaust ports on the other side of the head. I wanna check on my own to see if the valves are seating properly. Are they sealing and providing me excellent power? So what I did was I created a vacuum checker to check my own heads. Let's go over the parts that I used to put this thing together. I first purchased this Robin Air vacuum pump. It is a two-stage pump, 3 CFM on the capacity, and it runs on 110. I got this thing off of Amazon. It was a pretty good deal off of Amazon Warehouse. It's like $155. Here we have a vacuum gauge that I got off of Amazon. Pretty cheap, not too bad, $15. I even bought this extra cover on it. The cover was six bucks. I had to buy this quarter, 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 quarter cross. And then there are a few adapters. I bought these hoses. These two hoses came with a set for some AC hoses. I wanted to use these guys because that's the connector that's on the vacuum pump. I couldn't find that particular piece, so I just ended up buying these guys. But the hoses were fairly cheap, but it already has the right pieces on there. To get my hoses to attach to this cross, I use a adapter. This barb is what goes into the hose. It goes into this side right here. The barb is 3 16 and on this side is a quarter NPT male, and that's the part that fits into the cross. To attach the hose to the adapter, all you have to do is put this cinch clamp on it. Some people call this a hose crimp clamp or a cinch clamp. And to crimp that cinch clamp, I use this tool right here. This particular crimper is made by Gear Wrench. The part number is 3955, and it's also used for CV boots. But to use it, all you do is you put this guy onto the hose in its position, and then you grab it like that, and you crimp it. And then you'll crimp the other side, and it'll end up looking just like this connection right here. To take them off, all you have to do is cut them. So buy some extras just in case you mess it up. Here's the ball valve. That ball valve was from Amazon as well. It's only like, I think like $6. And then probably this one is probably one of the more expensive pieces. I bought this from Goodson. This is a three inch valve test plate and it has a particular coupler on there. And I purchased that female piece that attaches to it. This is made by a company called Parker. And its part number is BST-1. You could only use one plate, but I have multiple plates, so I wanted to use the coupler on there. So let me put this thing together real quick and I'll show you how it works. First, I'm gonna connect my hose to the vacuum pump. Make sure you choose the correct size vacuum test plate and then connect that to the quick coupler. With your vacuum on, Place your vacuum test plate over the port that you want to test. And then just close the ball valve and you'll see how much vacuum you'll pull on the valve. So here you can see that in the black that is inches of mercury. So what an acceptable number is, is about 22 inches of mercury. That is about 0.7 bar. And so all you nearly need to know is that when the valve is sealed properly, this gauge will read at least 22 inches of mercury or 0.7 bar. Once you're finished testing this particular port, all you have to do to release it is just open the ball valve. 
And now it comes right off. Just for grins, let's take a look at each one of these ports. This is the intake side, and this is port number one. Let's just take a look. That one's pretty solid, about 26. I'm gonna release the ball valve. Let's go to number two. Again, rotate the ball valve. Again, that was looks like 26 inches of mercury. Let's check number three. Number three, real solid. Again, that is about a little bit over 26. Wow, that one seals really well. Here's port four. Intake side, and that is registering a little over 26 as well. Awesome. Let's flip it over and look at the exhaust. Here's the exhaust side. This is port number one, exhaust one. I'm gonna put my test plate over number one, and then I'm gonna grab the ball valve and rotate it. Close the ball valve. It looks like it is 26 again. You can see how well that that valve or those valves seal. Here's number two, rotate the ball valve. You guys see that? Let's see, what do we got? 26 again, very, very well sealed valves. Rotate the valve again. There's number three. Number three is over 26, that's awesome. This one right here is exhaust port four. Rotate our ball valve shut. Check that out, those are really good numbers. Just a little bit over 26, it doesn't get any better than that. You've seen what good sealing valves look like on my test tool. So now I'm gonna simulate what a bad valve looks like, what a bad valve seal looks like. So what that means is there is air leaking through the valve so it won't hold vacuum anymore. It'll hold a little bit of vacuum, but the more you open that valve, the less vacuum it will hold. So let's take a look at what that would look like. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one of the tools I've used before. It's a Euro export tool and it is a spring compressor. So let's take a look at what I'm gonna do. Take a look at some of my earlier videos. You can see how I replaced the keepers on this thing and did the valve seals. I use this exact same tool. So here we have a 14 millimeter socket. I'm just using this to rotate this guy by hand. And that's the driver. And let's go to the other side and look at the valve. To simulate that the valve seal is not good, I opened the valve a little bit. Now I'm gonna put my adapter on here. I've got vacuum on it. It's not holding any vacuum. Look, I put my finger on here and it goes up, which means that the valve's open. See, it's not holding any vacuum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly close the valve. You'll see the gauge will go up. Watch the gauge real carefully. I'm slowly rotating this thing out. There, it's moving, you see it? I'm slowly closing the valve. That's what a bad valve looks like. It's not gonna hold, it's not gonna hold full vacuum. Full vacuum, remember, a good valve seal is at 22 inches. Right now we're at like eight inches. Now look, I'm gonna slowly close the valve a little bit more. It's still not closed. Boom, it just closed. You guys saw that. And now you can see that it's totally backed out. But that's a perfect example of a bad valve seal. Remember, the minimum for a good valve seal is 22 inches of mercury. Wow, what a cool tool this thing is. I'm so impressed with how well this thing worked. What's great about this is now I don't have to go to the head shop to check if my valves are sealing properly. The other thing that I really like about this tool is I think it's important that you verify people's work. I know there are a lot of great head shops out there, but those guys are professionals, but they do make mistakes. And so it's very important to verify people's work. Case in point, let's say that you have a motor that you're rebuilding. You put a brand new head on it from a respected head shop. And just by chance, it the valves don't seal properly. Guess what? You just put that motor into the car and you go to run that thing. And now you realize, hey, how come it's not putting out so much power? Well, you do a leak down test on it and then, man, one of the valves is leaking. Think about all that time and effort that you put into that thing. This tool right here could save you. Anyhow, this is AJ with Relentless Racing, and I'm hoping that you guys have a wonderful day today, and I'm hoping you guys learned something from this video. And if you guys have any questions about how to make this tool or any of the parts or the costs, 
hit me up on the comments, send me any questions and suggestions, I really appreciate it. And of course, please like and subscribe if you don't subscribe already. Again, this is AJ with Relentless Racing. Stay relentless, and I'll see you guys on the track.